solemnity of Pentecost that we celebrate today marks the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. It is very important. Day. It brings them to fulfillment and to the end of Christ's Paschal mystery. It is the fulfillment of his promises. The promise he made in Luke 24, 49. He says, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you receive power from on high. He says, but if I tell you it, the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Promise made, promise kept. But there is a reason that Jesus had to send the Spirit to us. There is a reason that he told the apostles to wait. Wait until you are clothed with power from on high. Because he gave them a mission. To be witnesses. We are a mission church. In Luke, he says, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. He follows it up in Acts. But you will receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus knew that on our own human efforts, in our own human spirit, we would surely fail. But to continue the work that he had accomplished through his suffering, death and resurrection, for the church to continue that, it would need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that is one of the works of the Spirit in the church. The Holy Spirit empowers us so that we can preach the good news with teachings and signs. The Holy Spirit comes to unify the church. If you recall, the story of Babel. Man in his sinful arrogance wanted to build a tower to reach heaven. And God confused them by foreign languages so that they were unable now to speak to understand each other and to work together in the sinfulness. And they were scattered. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit uses the same languages, the same foreign tongues, to proclaim the good news. All hear the Spirit, all hear the good news being proclaimed by the apostles in their native languages. The Holy Spirit reverses the effects of the sin by bringing unity. I think one of the most remarkable ways that the Spirit moves is to transform. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the readings from Acts that we have been doing throughout this Easter season, but I hope like me, you take a different look at Peter. Peter was a man who often got it wrong, often had to be rebuked by the Lord. And Peter's greatest shame came at the moment when the rubber met the road that 
he denied Jesus three times. And now this very same Peter and this gang and this band of apostles who were hiding for fear of the Jews locked behind closed doors, they now open the doors and windows and begin to proclaim the gospel with boldness. No longer fear. Peter would not fe fear death, even going to Rome and being crucified there. He was so convicted in his heart that he was completely transformed. And as a result of that transformation, here we are now in Miramar. The Spirit confirms our relationship with God. St. Paul tells us in Romans that it's the Spirit itself that testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. We should never forget that. We are God's children. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. And truth is freedom. And truth, knowing the truth, brings conviction. Nothing can shake your faith if the truth is revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent to help us overcome. Jesus says, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. The Holy Spirit makes us holy. St. Paul tells us in Corinthians that you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of God and by the Spirit of God. We are all to be spirit-filled people. We have all received the Spirit in our baptism. Sealed by that very Spirit in our confirmation. And therefore, people who encounter us, they should see that Spirit manifested in us. And what are some of the ways that the Spirit manifests himself in the church? He does it through his gifts. The gifts that are listed in Isaiah 11. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. These gifts help us proclaim the truths of the faith. We should bear fruit. That's what we are called to do, to bear fruit. But what are the fruits of the Spirit that we should be showing? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This past week, we have been looking at the violence in Gaza. And it seems that all of this fruit is so necessary there and so absent. We need to call the power of the Spirit upon that place so that in men's hearts there so that what is necessary for them to live in unity will come. And the Spirit is often manifested in the church throughout different periods of times and people through charisms, special signs. There are signs or gifts of grace and they give us the power to speak. The power to speak the mind of God. And they are word gifts of prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. And throughout the book of Acts and the epistles, you will see those gifts in operation. There are gifts of service. And that's the power to know. Wisdom, knowledge, 
and discernment. They tell us what to do and how to do it. And then there are gifts of works. And that is the power of faith, miracles, and healing. Jesus' preaching was always accompanied by cures, miracles, and deliverance that led people to faith and enabled them to experience as well as hear the good news. These gifts work to bring unity, to empower, and to serve the church's needs. Now I'm going to add something here. We often read these things in the lives of the saints and we consider them incredible but each and every one of us is capable of the same signs if we allow the spirit to operate in us as I said before in the beginning the church began on that day of Pentecost it's the birth of the church but it did not end with the death of the apostles. The church lives, and the church is here in Nirvana. The mission to continues with to witness continues to this day with you and I. Sometimes I hear people say that we need to awaken the spirit of God in our lives. But it's the other way around. We need to call the Holy Spirit to awaken us. We can go out limited as we are, but not powerless. We are powered by the Spirit. And just as the Twelve transformed the Roman world and then all the corners of it after, don't be afraid. With the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we can do the same. Let's begin by asking the Spirit to transform our lives. We need the Holy Spirit. As much today as they did back then. And that's why the church today, Pentecost, recites that wonderful secret. Veni Sante Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit. We can't go out as we came in. We will be nourished and fed by the body and blood of Christ in the universe. And He fulfills His promise in us by sending the Spirit to dwell in us. Let us go out with confidence and with power in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.